If you're a radio operator working post-disaster, you need to know where to go to listen for information, whether for your own use or to develop an operating picture for an agency requesting information. We're going to show you how to build a reference for your radio station and to be able to develop ground truth information. This is Radio KD8 TTE episode 74. Stick around. Black one, black one. In disasters, radio is often the only working means of communication for large numbers of people. Those will be stations that organize into nets, and nets can be organized into different purposes. For example, there is a command net. Command and control is typically how we're going to see things in public safety organized. There are also support nets, those that are going to be providing some sort of support to other operations. And of course, there will be special purposes that develop over the course of response to the emergency or disaster. Command nets are typically going to involve directing assets where they're needed. When usual radio systems aren't working, there may be a need to provide contingency or emergency radio service to keep those assets in contact. These are often going to be relatively close to one another, such as within a county. Emergency operations, such as managing shelters, might need to send messages to emergency managers to request supplies or to advise of conditions. These are also likely to be close to one another, such as within a county or within an area of neighboring counties. As the emergency develops, the need for other circuits can arise. For example, the circuit that's used to support the emergency shelter is great for supporting it overall. As time goes on, though, people who have taken shelter there are going to need to get messages out to friends and family, indicating that they're well, they're being taken care of, or whatever the situation may be. Intelligence can be many things. It can be, for example, just conditions on the ground. It can be outgoing or incoming. An example of outgoing information would be the location of floods or where there are bridges or roads that are out of service. Incoming might be something like severe weather that is on the way. Just because we are responding to an emergency or a disaster locally doesn't mean that we don't care if another tornado is headed our way. Local information can be valuable to emergency managers working on providing resources to an affected area. Some information might be observable. This is why we have programs to train storm spotters who can accurately and precisely describe severe weather. We also have training for damage assessment so that actionable information can be sent where it needs to go. Many of us also have instrumentation that can be helpful, giving us accurate measurement of critical weather conditions at precise locations, for example. What else can radio operators do to help when there's an outage? As we've said repeatedly, don't wait for an emergency to try to figure out how to make something work. We've talked about building a station communications plan generally focused around the resources that are available and the frequencies on which they can be found. Today we're going to be looking more specifically at adding to the station plan the frequencies where we'll want to listen. Not to transmit, but to listen. We don't know what will be needed in an emergency, so if we are prepared, we'll have the ability to tune in where we're going to have the best chance of finding the most important and relevant information. That might also include regional or national sources. And don't forget that you're going to need to have a means to organize that information. You gotta copy it, you gotta make sure that you've got it complete, you might want to do so by computer, but you probably also want to be able to fall back to pen and paper because you might need to preserve electricity. So where should you get started? Well, you might want to start with the NIFOG, the National Interoperability Field Operations Guide. Check with your state, see if you have a statewide interoperability guide as well. Check the description for a link to the current NIFOG that is downloadable. These field operation guides are handy references to show you what frequencies are in use in various conditions as well as contact information for agencies that includes things like phone numbers. 
The field operating guides do not grant authority to transmit, so make sure that you are staying within your operating authority when transmitting. We are primarily focused on listening today. Phone numbers and frequencies where you have the authorization to operate should be built into your station plan. The NIFOG, the state fog, and the others are no substitute for your local station plan. You don't want to be flipping through these documents for the first time in an emergency. WWV and sister stations WWVH and WWVB are the NIST stations that provide accurate time and other information. In addition to the ongoing report of time, there are slices of each hour that are devoted to the broadcast of useful information. We've used WWV in our DoD comics and other exercises covered on this channel. Weather radios provide current information from the National Weather Service and include alerting capabilities. Those data bursts can be used to have a radio that's quiet kick on with an alarm if the transmission is for the area where the radio is. Frequencies are widely available. We've got 10 of them in North America. Seven of them are for the National Weather Service in the U.S. As we've said in other cases, nothing is 100%, so we're going to want to have this as well as other options for getting weather and other critical hazard information. As it turns out, when I was shooting this video, KIG-86 that covers Columbus and nearby areas in Ohio was out of service. So many people have become used to cable and internet service that they can't even pick up broadcast TV. Is that your case? An inexpensive antenna can do the trick. Broadcast TV will provide you with more than reruns of your favorite 70s and 80s TV shows and movies, but it can give you access to local news media, government proceedings, and other information. Also, don't forget broadcast radio. Your local and nearby broadcast AM and FM radio stations can provide you quite a lot of information. You might find that a wire up in a tree gets very interesting if you tie it to a little AM radio. You might be able to get news from around the state and beyond. Automated Service Observing Systems ASOS, are used heavily in aviation. You might find that there are airports near you that transmit such data. Check the AirNav site linked from the description to find out what's near you what you can receive and keep a record of that. Should you lose internet access, you might want to get surface observations around you and you'll want those frequencies before you've lost that service. Now, those automated voices can be difficult to understand if you're not accustomed to hearing them, so maybe a little practice is a good idea now and then. Make sure that you can copy it properly. Notice to air mission. Taxi with Charlie Four. Charlie 6, center line, line, out of service. And don't forget Citizens Band. CB can be quite useful, especially when you're dealing with truck drivers, for example, who might be bringing in supplies, who could benefit from local support, or be able to provide traffic and road information about where they've just come from. Do you have maps of the area? I mean the kind that work even without power or internet access. Paper maps. Those are going to be very helpful if you need to find what's around, if you're trying to help somebody to navigate and you just don't have access to internet sources. Do you have your own weather instruments? Some basic data can be helpful. Simple weather stations are better than nothing and can be quite useful with just a little thought about sighting them and some proper maintenance. Do you have a scanner that lets you hear police, fire, and EMS? These are commonly now P25 trunked digital radio systems, so your analog VHF won't do the trick. That doesn't mean that it's hard to get to, it just takes some work, a little bit of forethought, some planning, and some inexpensive equipment can help you. As you build up your plan and participate in exercises, you might find where you're missing things that you wish you had. That's good, it's part of the process of development and the reason that we conduct exercises. Whatever you come up with, it's a starting place. Build out what types of information you might need to gather locally and where you can go to get it. 
Remember that this will be a nice addition to your guides, your regular net signal operating instructions, and information that you need to be effective in gathering and reporting information, whatever is needed if you happen to be in just the right spot at the right time. So a few parting thoughts. When you're giving reports, you want to make sure that you know what you're reporting. Remember, in the DoD COMEX 22-2, someone used a website to get ping times that were requested. That's not the local network, and so what that means is that somebody was reporting information from a different network from the one that was requested. That's worse than no information, it's wrong information. We also want to make sure that you're keeping track of things like your units of measure. Are you talking Celsius or Fahrenheit, millibars or inches of mercury? inches or centimeters. Be specific. You don't want to repeat something like I-71 is closed. Which direction are you talking about? Is it all lanes? Where? Get a good report. Get the details all together and assemble them before you hit push to talk. Is it your observation that you're relaying or is it one that came from somewhere else? And if it's from somewhere else, where is it? Was it from a particular TV channel? If so, say so. Was it an amateur station? If so, say so. And say which one. Make sure that you attribute the source. Make sure that you know what you're having reported. Is it measured or is it estimated? What is the time of the observation? It might be that the information that you have is 10 minutes old or an hour old that's going to be important for when it comes to somebody compiling all of those different kinds of reports from the field. How does your station plan look? What else do you include? Share your thoughts in the comments or on the mailing list. Like the video, share it, and subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any of the new stuff. This is Radio KD8TTE.